I think the first person I'm going to introduce, we have three candidates, so hopefully they all are, will be here today. But I'm going to introduce first Sandra Kennedy, who's been with us before. She's an outstanding person. She was elected to the Arizona House in 1986 for six years. She was in the Arizona Senate for three terms. She was in the Arizona Corporation Commission in 2008 also. She is an advocate for solar energy and uh, consumers and a lot more, but I won't go into any more than that. So Sandra, could you go ahead and tell us about yourself and what your plans are? All right. And thank oh. you again for having me this afternoon, actually for having all three of us. Uh, Lauren will be joining us very soon. It is great to be here to actually what I'd like to do is kind of give you an overview of you know what we've been doing at the commission and then talk a little bit about my campaign. Uh, we have been working on energy rules. Um, the stakeholders have been working on energy rules for the last uh, six years, actually almost seven years. And the energy rules went down like a sore thumb last month on a two to three vote, three votes against it. Unfortunately, I'd like to see Arizona move to a renewable energy state where we are concentrating on moving from fossil fuel to renewable energy and to clean up our air, the environment is very important to me. Anyway, uh, we have been working on energy rules. I think Arizona is primed to be the solar capital of the world. And I strived and have strived in the past, even when I was on the commission in 2009 to 2013, January of, January of 2013, to move Arizona in a direction that we've been, never been in before, to create uh, new energy rules, to create uh, rules for energy efficiency and to create jobs. We saw an economy change in, 20, uh, in 2010 when we promulgated the energy efficiency rules and created jobs for Arizona. And we have a commission today that is moving in the opposite direction that does not want to uh, see that Arizona has energy rules or that we basically clean up our air, clean up, clean up Arizona, period, when it comes to renewable energy and energy efficiency. Uh, recently, we had a Tucson Electric application for a rate increase. And of course, uh, Tucson Electric did not get everything that they wanted, in fact, we reduced their revenue income, which was good for the rate payers. I also think that it is important for us to have conversation when it comes to just and equitable transition. It is important for us to kind of walk alongside our uh, native brothers and sisters. The largest utilities in this state have utilized four corners for years the largest coal plant in this state to power Arizona. They have used the water, they've used the air, they have um, caused unhealthy conditions on the nation. And I think that it is time that even though the utilities have made profit on top of profit, it is time for them to return some, some of those profits to the nation to help them move from coal to renewable energy. So I am fighting as hard as I can to work on those issues that is very important to me and it should be important to all of you. You know, we are in a drought here in Arizona. We should be really looking at conservation. Conservation is important to me. When companies come in and want to talk about restructure or uh, rate increases, the first question I ask is, what are you doing when it comes to conservation? Most companies are not doing best management practices. 
And if we aren't as a commission forcing them to do it, there is no guarantee of a 100 year water supply. There is no guarantee for, for my children, their children, and the children that come thereafter. So we have to be good stewards of our precious resources and we need to start at the commission. We have uh, at the commission have really gone after bad actors when it comes to securities fraud. People and especially our seniors have been very vulnerable to individuals who have these, you know, quick get rich ideas. And we've had some individuals who've come through here and we've been able to go after those individuals and return nearly $200 million in the last two years to investors who have been um, used by bad actors. And I call them bad actors because that's just what they are. We have recently had Southwest Gas in uh, to talk about the pipes, the very pipes under our feet. And the question I raise is, are the people of this state safe when it comes to the natural gas that's flowing through those pipes? We've had a couple of incidents. They have not been good incidents where people have been um, blown up, buildings have been blown up. And thank God no lives have been lost, but some serious injuries. And I will continue to fight the good fight to make sure that uh, Southwest Gas is doing what they need to do. Lastly, before I talk about my campaign, I wanna talk about uh, transportation electrification. I think it, it is very important. It is important for our state to make sure that we are connecting to the grid. We are connect, connecting renewable energy to the grid. I believe that we are in a great position here in Arizona with a lot of money that will come in from the federal government for infrastructure that we need to move. We need to make sure that the commission along with other stakeholders in this state are making sure that our grid is ready for uh, renewable energy and electric vehicles. With that, I'll kind of move to my campaign and I wanna thank all of you for continuing to support me. This go round, this uh, election cycle, I am running with a great lady. I'm running with Lauren Kuby, which she'll have an opportunity to speak in a few moments. But we are team, teaming up. No, we, we are, we have teamed up. And Lauren has already gotten her signature. She's gotten her $5 donations. We are both clean elections candidates and we appreciate your support by signing our petition, by giving us a $5 donation. And I will put in the chat my, my website so that you can go there and sign my petition and give a $5 donation. It is very important. It is very, it's very important for my campaign and the campaign that we will run together to win Arizona, to win the Corporation Commission, to have a majority which there has not been a majority at the commission in nearly three, uh, three decades. So maybe I should kind of stop there because I could probably talk on and on about what goes on at the commission, my campaign. I'll probably try to leave something for Lauren to talk about, um, but I think I've hit on some of the greatest issues that I've worked on, some that I'm working on and I'm looking forward to getting reelected and going back to the commission to move Arizona. I think Arizona should be the solar capital of the world. And I think the only way we get it done is if we have three strong women at the commission doing the work, the environmental work for the state of Arizona. So thank you for the opportunity and thank you for allowing me to speak. And it's good to see that Lauren has joined us. Thank you so much. If anybody else has a question for Sandra, turn on your video, turn on and unmute yourself, or you may want to wait until everyone talks. I'm not sure how we want to do that, but if you have a specific question for Sandra, either raise your hand, send a chat, or turn on your video, okay? We can come back to. Well, thank you, Sandra, for that. Uh, 
Very nice. So I think I will introduce Lauren next because uh, her name was mentioned. Uh, Lauren, are you here? Yes, I am. All right, I'm well, late. Let me, let me, yeah, I apologize. All right, good. Well, let me introduce you first, though, okay? And you can fill in more. At, the things that I miss, you can add to. Lauren was a two-term Tempe council member, correct? You were also a vice mayor up there. You're known for fighting for consumer, environmental, and worker protections in Arizona. You're a champion for climate action and clean energy. And you live part-time in Colorado. Now I just go up in there when I can escape the hot heat sometimes. <laughs> it's a good place to go, good place to go. All right, so that was my introduction. So you can add to that if you'd like and tell us what you want to tell us. Oh, thanks so much. So, so glad to be here. And I have to say that I think the Green Valley event in the fall was the most successful of our campaign. I, I got, I think, 82 fives from both myself and for Sandra. So 164 fives that day and so many signatures. That was an amazing event and really appreciate it. It really gave a jump start to our campaign. So uh, thank you for having me. Sorry to be late to the party. I had a calendar snafu and Sandra bailed me out. So thank you, Sandra. So um, I am a two-term council member in Tempe. I'm serving out my term uh, through July and I lead on um, climate action in, in the city of Tempe. We have actually we're about to pass our climate action plan 2.0, which is infused not just with principles of equity, but with actual equity practices. So I'm really proud of the work we did with Unlimited Potential and Chispa and lots of youth groups to get the voice of young people into our climate action planning. Because after all, they're, they're the generation that's gonna be most impacted by decisions we make on the city level. And I so believe that cities need to leave in, in climate action. Then during the day, <laughs> I, I, I lead uh, at ASU, the Stardust Center for Affordable Homes and the Family. And it actually also directly relates to the position I'm applying for, because at Stardust, we try to work with cities, convene cities on topics of housing insecurity and what we call the social determinants of health. So be it transportation or ed educational access, food access, obviously housing access, access to utilities, they all are interrelated factors that contribute to to a family's security or insecurity. So I'm really excited about the work I do at ASU as a sustainability scientist, I'm a social scientist, and believe that kind of experience is so crucial uh, to, to being a good commissioner. So I, I am running with Sandra. We are running to be a democratic majority on the Corporation Commission. And I cannot wait for the day that Sandra Kennedy is the chair of that commission, a long, long due uh, deserved not just honor, but leadership position, because she has been leading the state in whatever clean energy efforts we've, we've been able to succeed. That's Sanders been at the helm of all of that. So 15 years ago, we really truly led the nation in renewable energy adoption. And with Chris Mays and Bill Mundell passing the renewable energy standard, the first in America it was 15% renewables by, by 2025. And then when Sander came on board as, as commissioner, they passed uh, energy efficiency standard. And that I think has saved $9 billion for consumers and rate payers over the course of these years. It's been so important to establishing ourselves with some kind of footprint um, in the renewable energy world. We know that Arizona is the sunniest state in the nation, yet our energy bills, our, our electric bills are the highest of all the Southwestern states. And I think there's a direct connection, direct connection between the lack of action on the Utility Commission and the uh, Corporation Commission and those high bills. So fundamentally, the Corporation Commission, you need to be a consumer advocate. Just put it out there. That is the most important role. It is a policy making role. And you need to wake up every day representing the, the citizens of Arizona, the residents of Arizona, and ask those tough, critical questions, which you know, Chris Mays, as an investigative reporter, did so well. And as Sandra does time and time again, whether she's talking to a Southwest Gas and asking about their, their leaky gas pipelines and, and their inability to, seem to seemingly take care and maintain those pipelines, whether she's asking the tough questions about APS and what money they put in to defeat her back in 2014, it was over 11 million, and Sandra discovered that through subpoenas and such. So whether it's, it's asking those questions or just leading in the rate hearings to ensure that the rates are fair and equitable. 
Now, Corporation Commission, you know, they really, you really have to balance sort of four factors when you're a commissioner. And the first one is equity and justice. You need to ensure that there's equity and justice in the system for workers, for, for the rate payers for Arizona. You need reliability. And we know that solar and renewable energy, they contribute to resilience on that grid. They contribute to reliability. And then you need affordability. We need to ensure that, that the, those least among us can afford to, to cool off because we have rising temperatures across, across the globe, across the country, and especially in Arizona. And, and lastly, we need to get to zero emissions. And we know that uh, this Corporation Commission, despite the leadership of Sandra Kennedy and Anna Tovar, didn't pass the, the renewable energy standard rules um, a few weeks back. And it's a sad testament that the Republicans, they, they were going to go along with it, Jim O'Connor, and negotiated, but they negotiated in bad faith and they ended up not supporting the, the very compromise that they agreed to. So when you see Sandra and I elected and with Anna Tovar, we are going to push through and work on those energy rules, which staff worked on for two or three years, by the way, and which are profoundly, profoundly impactful to our, our community and to our, uh, to our pocketbooks. They would save so much money for ratepayers. So, you know, I see the opportunities ahead of us, economic opportunities. We, we should be leading the country in renewable energy. We should be leading in job creation because when you, when you install a solar system, you, you can't pay ch uh, a Chinese company to install the solar system. You know, there are local jobs created, good jobs. And we need to have equity through the system. So supposedly APS has forsworn they're not going to get involved in this race and they're not going to bring in outside money. Well, well, that's yet to be determined, yet to be seen. But they are putting funds into the legislative races and as they always have. But it seems to be supercharged this year. So there's been a couple of, I don't know if Sandra got a chance to talk about this, so stop me if she, if she has, but there are a couple of just egregious bills that passed out of committee um, a few weeks back. One would actually limit those that could run for corporation commission to one of five areas, sort of one of five professions. You have to be an accountant, an economist, a business administrator, a legal uh, uh, administrative lawyer, or a professional engineer. And we know that the corporation commission work that's done, it, it's policy work. There's lots of expertise at the commission, all of the employees, and there's lots of outside, um, outside consultancies and information you can get. You need to have familiarity with water and energy issues, as I do from my term at, at, at ASU and from the work I've done on council. But you also need to be a consumer advocate. You need to be a watchdog against all those big special interests that come in and try and bully the commission, or not even bully, because many of the commissioners go willingly along with what the utilities want. So this is a pretty egregious bill. It's 2536. It's almost, it's almost ridiculous in its attempt to limit the choice of voters. Uh, Renz Jennings, who many of you know, would never, he's a farmer. He wouldn't have been allow, allowed to run. Uh, Sandra Kennedy, enormous experience as a, as a consumer advocate and as a legislator, would not have been able to, allowed to run. Chris Mays, who, who is an investigative journalist who knows how to ask tough questions, she wouldn't have been allowed. So it's palpably absurd, but you, know, you, never, you never know. Stranger things have happened in the legislature. And I actually called, maybe the legislature should um, have requirements for you know, a civics exam, pass, passing a civics exam, who knows? Um, there's also another bill, 2101, which would, which would get rid of the possibility of retail competition. Um, and the utilities would, would, are very happy to promote that. In fact, if that should pass, we'd get rid of language in our statute that allows for, uh, for consumers to sue SRP about their solar killing uh, net metering plan, which eliminated net metering. We had a kind of victory in the courts a few weeks ago and SRP is so eager to get this bill passed so they can, if they can't win it in the courts, they wanna win it legislatively to prevent rooftop solar in, in, our, um, in our state, which is you know, a terrible thing. So uh, with Sandra, I, I am so committed to working on uh, just transition work. And uh, we have extracted so much from the native, from our native communities, from our indigenous communities. 70% of all of the un unelectrified homes are in the Navajo Nation. All of the unelectrified homes in the country, 70% are in our state. That is a stain on our state. And we need to resolve that. And the utilities with, with their profits need to be, need to invest back in those communities that they took so much from for so long. And enabled Tucson to grow, enabled 
Phoenix to grow, we, we all owe the Navajo Nation and the Hopi Nation and all those coal communities, not just gratitude, but we, we owe them investment. And so I'm really, really proud that Sandra has led the charge on that and the call for that. And we need to really move those initiatives through. And, and we will when we're elected um, as corporation commissioners. So I am running clean and I'm done with all of my fives and my uh, signatures I filed. I have my clean elections money in the bank. I am so eager to, to uh, combine campaigns and we are combined as Sandra said, but we're gonna, our resources are gonna be combined so we can do joint signs, joint literature. Uh, we're representing each other at different venues across the state because we're traveling all over the state to represent the, the consumers, the people of Arizona. And I'd love to take any questions you might have. And thank you so much for inviting me today. Well, thank you for that information. Uh, very thorough. I think you know what you're talking about. Okay, while you were uh, speaking, uh, there was a chat that came in from uh, Sandra. Thank you for everyone for sharing your afternoon with us. Please help me by giving a $5 clean elections donation. Sign my petition. Visit uh, uh, reelectcandidate.com. Uh, also from Lois Connell, regarding outside funding, did Sandra find out the sources of that funding? Was any of it from foreign sources? So that uh, Lauren, or Lauren, that would be for Sandra to answer maybe later when we're finished, unless, unless uh, Sandra wants to come on. Sandra, you want to try to answer that question? I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, the subpoenas that I issued in 2019 were for APS. And we found that APS has spent an awful lot of money, not just on electing their uh, elected officials, but making sure that Prop 207 failed. Uh, I mean, tremendously. I mean, to, to see how much money that one utility would put into political races, it, it would just blow the socks off your feet. You know, and I think Lauren is, you know, she, she mentioned it just in trying to keep me off the commission. They spent between 11 million and $15 million to keep me off. They spent over 38 million just in two quarters to defeat Prop 207. And I look at that type of money and I say, well, we've got homeless shelters that need to be funded. We've got women's shelters that need to be funded. We've got the arts that need to be funded. We've got education that needs to be funded. But their resources have been gone, has gone into buying political power against the very ratepayer that makes sure that that their company stays uh, afloat. Okay, here's another one from G Dean Chosey. Was the bill restricting the type of people who could run for the commission aimed at you? Okay. Yeah, there are rumors that that was the case, you know, because they they know Sandra is a powerful consumer advocate. They know I am as well, and so there was some language um, by some of the some of the uh, legislators denigrating. We don't want consumer advocates to run. Um, so I think it is aimed. It wouldn't it wouldn't take effect until the twenty twenty four election. Um, but you know, I was joking. Business administration. Well, you know, I took Mavis Beacon's typing class, and I worked. <laughs> So the way you could define it, it would be so held up in the courts, I believe, because the definitions are so narrow. And I don't think Arizonans want their choices limited, right? So I put in the chat a description of those bad bills and, and how you can get involved because it's squarely, you know, pay for play. Gail Griffin has, has accepted so much money from APS and other utilities. And she was very cagey when asked about how this, how did this idea pop into your mind? I mean, why don't you just make a bill that's, I say, why don't you just make a bill that says only ex employees of APS can run for office um, or only Justin Olson can run because he has that financial background as the, as the head of Turning Point USA, right? So um, it, it is aimed, it's, it's aimed at, I think it is aimed partially at us, but it's also, it's aimed at former Republicans and Democrats who served in the Corporation Commission and would not qualify even to run. And I just don't think Arizonans want their choices limited. Okay, thank you for that. 
Anybody else have a question right now? Uh, if not, I'm going to introduce Jonathan Hill. Jonathan, are you there? So let me introduce you. I'm going to give you a quick introduction. In the back, looks like Mars to me. Uh, Jonathan Hill was born in Kingman, Arizona, and you have been in Tempe since 2000, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You were heavily involved in aerospace engineering. You're an engineer and scientist at Arizona State uh, University, having to do with the Mars Spaceflight Facility. Anything else you want to tell us about that? That's really interesting. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, inviting me to speak with you guys today. I appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, so as Paul said, uh, my background is primarily in, in science and engineering. Um, started out, you know, as a young ASU student, wanted to be an astronaut like Mark Kelly. Um, actually had a, a picture of, of him and his brother Scott, a uh, signed picture up on my dorm room wall uh, all those years. Um, so I graduated with degrees in aerospace engineering and Russian, uh, but unfortunately that whole astronaut uh, job didn't work out for me. But I got the next best thing. Uh, I ended up getting a job as a spacecraft engineer at ASU's Mars Space Flight Facility. So I've worked on uh, satellites that have orbited Mars. I worked on the Spirit and Opportunity Mars rovers uh, for a couple years. But uh, I decided I wanted to run for the Corporation Commission um, because I've always been disappointed with the lack of people with uh, scientific or engineering qualifications in government. Um, and that's something that's particularly concerning when it comes to the Corporation Commission. Um, you know, technology and, and engineering and science, those are such integral parts of our everyday lives today. And I think that government needs to reflect that uh, and have that expertise so you know what hard questions to ask uh, when these issues come up. So uh, I've chosen to run as a clean elections candidate, obviously don't want anyone to think that APS is trying to, you know, buy me <laughs> uh, like they do so many other candidates. Um, and I guess a little bit more about my background. Um, so I also earned my master's degrees in aerospace engineering and geology. And with any luck, I'll be defending my PhD in geological sciences uh, on March 1st, uh, coming up very quickly. But as I've neared the end of that sort of major life experience uh, with that PhD, I found my interest sort of shifting and wanting to do more with my engineering and science background that'll help more urgent problems, you know, here on Earth, uh, particularly related to the, the massive climate changes that we're seeing. And I believe the Corporation Commission would be uh, an excellent way to do that, and certainly on a more local level, uh, since I've been an Arizona resident my entire life and uh, have deep roots here. So I guess just to briefly talk about a couple issues I'm really passionate about. Um, one is just cybersecurity in utilities. We've seen in the last couple of years that uh, hackers are increasingly targeting our public utilities, whether it be power, water, even sewer, uh, trying to disrupt our lives. And it's gone from, you know, the stereotypical hacker in their parents' basement hacking into a system just because they can to these state-sponsored bad actors um, that are trying to ransom our systems. And unfortunately, it, the utility companies just never saw themselves as a target. And so they don't have the proper precautions in place in many cases. Uh, in fact, the Colonial Pipeline in the Southeast United States, it was uh, ransomware last year. The uh, hackers gained access to their systems based on a single password they obtained through a phishing scam. And it's just unbelievable to me that such a critical piece of national infrastructure could be that vulnerable to hacking. And from working on all these NASA missions over the years, you know, we've always been a, a huge cybersecurity target. Uh, we're basically under attack 24 seven from you know, every level of hack hackers all the way up to the state sponsored actors. And we've developed a lot of very simple, very cost-effective, uh, but also very effective methods of securing our systems. And now you're starting to see places like banks uh, implement those like two-factor authentication to protect your savings and checking accounts. 
And I think it's just silly that some of those same protections haven't been expanded to our public utility companies. And you know, one example I always bring up is uh, imagine if you lost power for 24 hours in the middle of the summer, you know, imagine how much damage that would do to you and your neighbors. Um, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> so I think it is necessary to take those basic common sense precautions to prevent something like that. Um, another issue I've been really passionate about is making sure that our state's transmission infrastructure is being rejuvenated and rebuilt in a way that it supports renewable energy. Unfortunately, since Arizona started out so based on coal, a lot of our transmission infrastructure goes to areas that are rich in coal uh, to bring that power down to the larger cities. Unfortunately, most of those areas aren't great places to have solar or wind power. But unfortunately, you can't just go out in the desert somewhere, build a solar power plant and hook it up to the grid. You need some really long, very expensive um, and very difficult to build uh, transmission lines to get them there, that power to the cities. And to be fair, we've seen a couple projects recently uh, to extend transmission lines to more renewable energy favorable areas of Arizona, uh, particularly one recent uh, effort to build a transmission corridor further down the I-10 corridor. Um, but I think that we need to do a lot more with encouraging that and making sure that that transmission infrastructure is being rebuilt to the right places. And I think that's where the commission should take a more active role in um, both their actual regulatory abilities and in just their soft power, their sort of bully pulpit um, to guide that uh, effort a little bit more. So um, I say I'd love to sort of have a conversation with all you guys and, and have lots of questions flying back and forth. So I'll uh, wrap up there and just say I'll throw into the, the chat my website and the link to sign my petition online or to donate a five. And I can't tell you how much those mean, how valuable those are. You might think, you know, five dollars, you know, how how much is that going to help? Well, once you reach the, the threshold, it unlocks a lot of state provided funding for our campaign. So uh, it really helps keep the funding public and keep the funding uh, totally open and prevent a lot of these lobbying groups from getting involved. So we really appreciate every five you can you can throw in. And with that, I'll, I guess, turn it back to Paul. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, a privilege to have three very interesting uh, uh, and intelligent people presenting to us today. So if anybody has a general or specific question, please ask. George, I'm sure you have something. My, my first question is for Jonathan, in your background in aerospace, and, and especially I see you were you worked on the instrumentation for Spirit and Opportunity, the Mars rovers, which is really impressive. In that, with that background, uh, how will that help you as, on a, uh, as a position on the corporate commission besides areas of cyber security? Yeah, so I think in all areas um, related to public utilities, whether it be the power companies, the water companies, um, I think that it would be really helpful to have a commissioner who can go out and talk to the engineers on the ground. You know, those contractors that are installing those solar panels on rooftops, um, the people building those new transmission lines, maintaining the old transmission lines, and really dig into what they need, what problems they see. Um, if one thing I've learned from my you know, 15 years doing space engineering is that it's amazing how the people on the ground see so much and they know so much about what needs to be done uh, to improve things and how little of that actually filters up to the top in a lot of cases. So I think it'd be helpful to have someone who can go out and have those technical conversations and then bring that back to the commission and use it to influence policy. That's a good, that's a good answer. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Sandra, you had something to say? Well, can I jump in and add to uh, just what Jonathan said? Sure. So um, we talk about cybersecurity. Um, we've been, actually I docketed a letter to uh, all of the utilities to answer 
that question, are we safe here in Arizona from cybersecurity? I did that in 2020. And yes, of course, the utilities have already responded. And for those who may have had some issues, those issues have already been fixed. So we're not gonna have any of the problems that you've seen around the country where cyber uh, attacks have occurred and they've gotten control of utility companies. You're not gonna see that here because our companies are ready. We've already got them prepared. We are in front of the eight ball, not behind the eight ball. Um, we're talking about moving power from Arizona to California. Uh, we're talking about renewable energy from power from Arizona to California. We're already doing that. We've got a site called Hakwahala. It's in between here and California, which we have already started to move from fossil fuel to renewable energy. So I'm glad to see that Jonathan is, you know, in tune to what we should be, what we should do, but we're already doing that. And most of the time I have been there to say, hey, here are the changes that need to be made. And it's good to have Jonathan to think about it, but we're doing it already. So thank you. I just wanted to uh, respond to that. And conservation, there was a question uh, in the chat about conservation. Conservation is an issue that I deal with every time a utility company, especially a water company comes before the commission to ask for a rate increase. So I ask them, are you doing best management practices? How can we curtail the use of those who just consistently overuse water and not conserving? So yes, the, the right questions are being asked and I am just looking forward to Lauren joining the commission and we continuing to ask those hard and tough questions. But thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. All right, let me read a couple of chats here also. <clears throat> uh, I wanna tell everyone that I've known Lauren for over 30 years and she has walked the walk and talked the talk. She's a dedicated public servant and climate activist. I'm glad, proud to call her a friend. That's from Nancy. And of course, Lauren said, thank you, Nancy. I'm honored to combine my democratic and environmental activism. Dean Chosey, can the Corporation Commission push drinking water companies to focus more on water conservation? That was a question. So anybody want to jump in? Well, I, I can mention, I said in the chat, I, the commission regulates over, over 300, I think, small utilities, uh, water utilities, not the city, not municipal. I served on the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association for seven years, and I'm very familiar with water utilities and um, as they apply to the, to the cities. So yeah, there could be a lot. I mean, there's been a real neglect in rural areas oftentimes with those with those utilities of investment. Um, and we are in a dire situation with shortages on the Colorado River. So the commission can play a great role in requiring updates and infrastructure and requiring conservation measures. And um, I see there's a question about how many corporation and commission positions are open. There are two open. And so Sandra is running as an incumbent. I'm running as a newbie. And it's so important when you run that you run together. And we've seen a lot of commission races fail because people run sort of independently. That's why Sandra and I are, are one for all and all for one. And we have such a depth of knowledge about all the counties across the state and no Democrats and, and, and individuals and the Masons and Kiwanians, you know, across the state. It's important to have a sort of an established reputation so you can go in there and really build the infrastructure in this down ballot race, because we can all agree this, you know, this is midterms coming up and down ballot races can suffer, especially Democrats, especially young people can sometimes forget to go vote all the way down. And so Sandra's always telling us and always reminding us like bottoms up, we have to flip the ballot over. We have to start at school board. We have to start, you know, justice of the peace, move upward and make sure that we vote for all the down ballot races. And the commission is one of them. I, I like to say the commission's like the most important office that no one's ever heard of in Arizona and it impacts your daily life. So we need you Green Valley Democrats to get that word, about, word out about how important this race is to Arizona. Oh, I have a question before I go to two more chats. One is, 
if we could wave a magic wand and the Democrats become the majority, how do things change immediately? You want to take that one, Sandra? Okay. Well, we would have a Democratic majority, three women, three women who are united and being consumer advocates and watchdogs, corporate watchdogs and renewable energy champions. I see Sandra is the chair of that commission, and we would revisit those rules that were denied a few, um, a few weeks ago, so sadly, because even the utilities have, have stronger rules, you know, of a higher renewable energy uh, percentage in their future. And so it's pretty pathetic that those rules weren't passed. So I think those rules would be immediately revisited. And then many of the docket issues Sandra has brought up, a, a, um, a just transition would be revisited. Now, you know that things don't happen overnight on the commission. It's a very considered, thoughtful, thorough process. It is a policymaking body. And so those rules and, and the different dockets that Sanders bought, brought up, um, they're not gonna happen overnight, but you're gonna see a very quick, uh, a much quicker <laughs> resolution of those issues in the favor of, of Arizona ratepayers and consumers. All right, let me ask uh, this chat question then. And we could always come back to that too, right? How can a publicly regulated utility spend so much on political activities? Isn't this illegal from Mike Norman? Go ahead, Laura. Well, I, Sandra knows so much about this, but I want to say one of the reasons I chose to run was because of dark money influence in our elections. And as a council member, I led an initiative, 91, 91.44% of Tempians voted to require that dark money groups simply say who they are. And you'll see, you know, Terry Goddard's Stop Dark Money ballot initiative is very much the same. It just extrapolates to the state level. And so we saw in 2014, the, the commission bought and paid for by the utilities. And Sandra has been you know, a, a lion in, in championing clean and transparency in our election system and did issue the subpoenas that, that got a lot of the details out. I still think there's an FBI investigation going on. Isn't there, Sandra, about some of the activities? Um, I'm not sure if one will see resolution, but it's pretty clear that Arizonans don't wanna see dark money. They wanna know when they're voting for someone, they're not voting for a subsidiary, subsidiary of Coke Corporation, but they're voting for someone who's really out there to protect them. You know, that's why it's so important that to support clean elections candidates up and down the ballot, you know, not just this race, but in all the others, because uh, it makes that funding so much more transparent and everyone can go and see for themselves exactly where that money is coming from. All right, thank you. Uh, Sandra, you have anything to add to that? Oh, I was just going to add that one of the things that I promised in 2018 was that I would make uh, APS and other utilities open up their books so that we could see their spending. I wanted to know how much money they were spending on uh, buying their elected officials. I wanted to see how much money they were spending in memberships for ALEC. There were a lot of questions that I had. And by God, I found out more than probably I wanted to know <laughs> after I uh, issued those subpoenas and APS was probably the biggest abuser of the ratepayer dollars. So I think we have made it very plain and clear that you cannot spend ratepayer dollars. Uh, they have vowed to stay out of the corporation commission races, but the question is, will they stay out of legislative races? And that, that's just a question that I will continue to ask and hopefully that I will get an answer very, very soon. Transparency is important. And if we're not talking about transparency, um, I think that some of these companies will continue to do what they're doing as Lauren talked about in the dark. All right, I have a chat, and then I have Andrea D'Alessandro has a question. In the chat, in Green Valley, there is a great concern about the amount of water the proposed mines on both sides of the Santa Rita's will consume. Can the commission impact this? I would just jump in there and say that absolutely. Um, although this would need the commission, I think, to work hand in hand with a lot of other state organizations. Um, and that's where I think, you know, as a geologist, I can tell you that, you know, mining is a lot more than just mining. It involves a lot of water, a lot of electricity. Usually both of those resources are historically not managed the best as they could. 
uh, when it comes to the mining companies in Arizona. So I think that it needs to be a whole team effort. I'm part of the whole regulatory agency spectrum in Arizona to really keep the mining companies under control. And I'll just throw out there that the Republicans are running uh, a very interesting candidate uh, for state mine inspector. Uh, usually that's just sort of a trivial office, uh, sort of a name only office, um, doesn't get a lot of attention, but they have an actual mining company geologist uh, running this year. And so they want to put that office literally in their pocket. Uh, so if you haven't already, I encourage you to go off, go and, and sign petitions, give fives for, you know, our democratic mine inspector candidates. Um, there is a case uh, currently in the docket pertaining to the mines and water. So it doesn't sound like I am prejudging the case. I won't go into detail or how I will vote or how I feel about it, but it is a question that is currently at the commission. Okay. George, I've, got a, I've, I've got a question for you and this could go all three of you. Uh, have any of the utilities see, re recently received any federal money to upgrade our uh, grid network in the Western part of the United States? Or are we still just as vulnerable as the Texas utilities uh, for uh, inclement environmental situations? Well, we are as vulnerable as Texas. You know, Texas is pretty unregulated. And uh, so we're not, sometimes our Republican opponents like to point out that, that, and even Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas said, I blame the failures of the grid of renewable energy when it's renewable energy and wind that provides some resilience in the system. And it was the gas pipelines that truly failed and, and froze, you know, they weren't being maintained properly. And, you know, they don't have a good regulatory body that can enforce and um, create these regulations. So uh, that would be my response. And, and my response to that would be, I have personally asked the utilities director to uh, formulate a letter to all the utilities, whether they're class A, B, C, D, from, well, from A to, to D, and ask them to tell the commission how much money they are going to be getting through the infrastructure uh, package and how they intend to spend those dollars. I want to make sure that we're watching those dollars. I want to make sure that they are spending those dollars correctly. And if we have an opportunity to say something, it ought to come from the bench of uh, the five commissioners. Absolutely. All right. Any other uh, comments? I have. Yeah, a I'll, just, I'll just throw in all really fast that you know, since it was brought up the Texas situation last year, I think that's a great cautionary tale of why the Corporation Commission in Arizona is so important, because uh, Texas doesn't have a, a true equivalent. And as Lauren said, they were extremely unregulated and they made a lot of business decisions when they should have been making engineering decisions. Uh, they went cheap. They made the, you know, the corporate lawyers made assumptions about what the weather would do and be in the future. And they were wrong. And the entire population of Texas ended up paying for that mistake. So I think that's, yeah, just a, a great cautionary tale about why something as, as everyday as utilities is really critical to our modern lives. Okay, before I uh, read Andrea Del Sandro's uh, question, uh, I've heard this, do windmills cause cancer? Let's, say, let's just say no. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrea asks, I have also asked APS to stay out of the AG race because they were so detrimental to Prop 207 clean energy for a healthy Arizona. So response, uh, Lauren, you had said you responded to that? Yeah, I mean, Brenovich inserted language that said, regardless to the price of consu for consumers, we should pass this you know, in, in the ballot language, which pretty much killed the initiative. And yeah, he really, you know, this is an important point to make because not, not just electing Sandra and I, we have to elect Chris Mays to the AG ship because she's promised to center climate and all of her decision-making and the AG has the authority to deny uh, a rule that the uh, Corporation Commission passes. So it's so crucial to what we do at the Corporation Commission to have Chris Mays, the strong Democrat, um, in charge of the AG's office and restore it to the people of Arizona. 
So Andrea said, thank you to Commissioner Kennedy for allowing me to read her letter at Natural Resources, <clears throat> Energy and Water last year during the severe pandemic. I had backup in case Rep, uh, Rep Representative Griffin cut me off. Any comments about that, uh, Sandra? Well, I tell you, it's great to have friends in high places and well, she was Senator at the time, and you'll always be a Senator, uh, Senator D'Alessandro. Uh, she was great. She carried um, and protected the people well of this state against a very detrimental bill by uh, uh, Ms. Griffin. And Ms. Griffin seems to be carrying the water for the utilities. She carries the water to take away our authority. She carries the water to change the qualifications for corporation commissioners. She is a detriment to the state of Arizona. And I look at the amount of money that the utilities have given her. It's unbelievable. Like how much? Well, I know that APS alone has given her $10,000. Wow. It's $13,000. At this point, yeah, but yeah, but just you're right about APS, but the other utilities, because all the utilities just you know make a well, they give a lot to the the Republicans on that on that committee. So I saw a, a nice text a while ago. It said, "Great replies and comments. Thank you from Lois and Mike Norman. You guys are outstanding for sure." So anybody else? Sandra, can you give this the names of the commission, current commissioners and their party affiliations? Of the five members currently? Yes. All right, so we have three. Uh, there's a five member commission. Three of them are Republican. I don't like calling my Republican counterparts names, but I'll do that because you asked me today. Thank uh, you. We have um, Leah Marquez Peterson, who is the chair. Justin Olson, who is leaving the commission this year to run against Mark Kelly, and uh, Mr. O'Connor, who was elected in 2020. So those are the three Republicans. And then you have myself and Commissioner Anna Tovar. And hopefully we will have a new addition to the commission. Her name is Lauren Kirby. <laughs> okay, here's a question. Is APS statewide? What is their territory? APS has 1.3 million customers. They are kind of scattered out Maricopa County, Northern Arizona, Northeastern, Eastern Arizona, and down Pinal County, I think is Pinal County. And I think I've, I've tried to do the boundaries as close as I could for you. Okay. Any other comments, any other questions? We hate to let you guys go because you're so full of good information. What, one other yes. question uh, I've got is, um, we get most of our power from Tucson Power and Light. And, uh, and every day we get a report on the energy that they've generated from environmentally clean uh, solar and wind. Uh, are more apt, the smaller utilities doing more energy efficient or is that just an appearance? You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wish that more companies will because the energy efficiency uh, rules and standards expired last year in December. The current commission has not had the fortitude to continue those standards. They just want to allow the utilities to do whatever they want to do. And that is one reason why we do not have it, uh, our energy rules for the state of Arizona also. When you see Tucson Electric Power doing things like that, they are more, they are more in tune with their rate payers than the largest utility company in the state. So when you see TEP 
showing their rate payers what they're actually doing, how they are powering up every day. That is a good sign. Mm. It is truly a good sign. Even though they'd like to, they claim they don't want to build any more new fossil fuel, but I think that they, you know, they've, they've got enough, but it probably in the back of their mind, they, they, they would probably do more natural gas. Where do we currently stand, Sandra, with the uh, um, rate metering for our solar uh, systems? Are Is that alive and well or dead? You know, net metering went away um, three, no, four years ago, four, maybe five years ago years now, ago. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, remember you had a commission who was anti-solar. And when you have an anti-solar commission, mm -hmm you're not gonna have net metering. Net metering benefits those who are participating and putting power to the grid. And the only thing they're asking for is just pay me for my power that I'm putting to the grid. We need to return net metering. And I think that that is a good thing for Arizona. And I, people ask about it all the time. So this is not a new issue, but it's an issue that we should tackle in the future. Yeah, and SRP, which I have, I think has a million customers or 1.1 million um, in central Arizona, they also have been, they're influenced by the Corporation Commission because the commission can decide whether they can cite, say, a gas power plant expansion in Coolidge, you know, right next to a Randolph, which is historically back black community, which is, you know, a profound example of environmental racism. And I know, I know the commissioner can't talk about this because she's going to rule on it, but we do have, um, there's great impacts when the commission rules that it seems like the other small utilities can, can follow even if they're not regulated, strictly regulated by the commission. And you know, SRP killed, killed net metering in February, 2015. And uh, with this gas expansion plant, it only is further, they're only furthering, furthering their investments in fossil fuel and dirty technology. All right, uh, SRP, Lauren is, Salt River Project. Oh. Salt River Project. Oh, so that's around Phoenix then. Uh, yeah, Central Arizona. Okay. That's a case where you know they keep water price. It was originally started by farmers, right, in the 19th century. So they keep water prices kind of artificially low, which doesn't help with conservation. And they increase, they keep up electricity prices high, you know, to pay for that difference. And so SRP has got a lot of interesting, um, interesting dynamics. All right. What would be your guess, any three, any of the three of you, what percentage will solar increase by in, let's say, five years? Or do you see it increasing significantly or not? Will there be a resistance um, to it or what? Yeah, well, I think we've already seen resistance to it. Um, you know, in the commission mm -hmm. voting 3-2 purely along party lines to, you know, not put in renewable energy goals and and mileposts for us to meet. So I unfortunately think the next couple of years, I'm a little pessimistic um, about renewable energy in Arizona. But long term, I'm extremely optimistic because I think just the economics of it, the, the cleanness of it, people will eventually come around. But we have to constantly work to, to one, educate them about why it's important, how it's important, and two, to stay on top of the larger utility companies that are just dead set against it. Um, and that's where I'd love to see some of these smaller utility companies that are willing to move into that area, you know, should be rewarded. Okay, so Great Lakes Span, though, if we could get a Democratic majority in there. Well, yeah, we would still see three, two votes, but going the other way. Well, it gives me hope our cities, you know, cities are stepping up to lead. And when uh, Donald Trump withdrew from the Paris Agreement, the or a movement was created and we're, the we're still in movement. I'm really proud that Tempe jumped into the, into the fray there because 70% of carbon emissions come from cities. So we need to be 70% of, of the solution as well. And so that's one of, another reason why I was, I was really encouraged and wanted to run for this office because we have a 100% renewable energy goal in the city of Tempe for our government operations. We're only at about 24%. It is hard to move when you don't have the commission requiring a renewable energy standard by a certain date. So we get offered opportunities from, from the utilities, but they're never something that's that advantageous to the consumers and to the residents of our city. 
And so it's important to have those signals set so the utilities know that they have to play ball and work with cities to really, really uptake, to do a big uptake in their renewable energy uh, goal and portfolio. So George, uh, are, you think we're done or I don't see any more questions or any more chats and these uh, great people came to, uh, to speak with us today. And they've given us a lot of good information. Well, I've got one last question and this may be um, not in your bailiwick or, or not in your pot is in that, uh, of course, we're, we're seeing more and more companies coming out with electric cars. And does the corporate commission have any sense from the utilities about an additional power for uh, power stations or power uh, service stations uh, along the interstates? I'm glad you asked that question. We are... Uh, let's see, December of last year, the commission formulated a committee to cite electric vehicle uh, infrastructure. So we are in the process of doing that and we're hoping that with the infrastructure bill that will uh, fund some dollars to Arizona, that that will help us in addition to what we've directed the utilities to do that more will be done. So yes, we have a lot to do with it. We're gonna have a huge say in that process. And it's important that um, you go to the commission, please go to the website, uh, participate in our monthly meetings. Our agendas are on the website and that's azcc.gov. I also have a Facebook page. It's Sandra Kennedy, Arizona Corporation Commissioner. You can also see the uh, open meetings through my Facebook page. Each time we have a meeting or a workshop, please participate. If you have a question, put the question in the chat. We will get back to you. But I am asking for more participation through the ACC website and my Facebook page. So any communication when it comes to electric vehicle, any communication when it comes to renewable energy, I, I want to hear. Uh, could you tell us your Facebook uh, page again, please? It is Arizona Corporation Commissioner Sandra Kennedy. I just was going to ask Sandra real quick. They used to have the commissions uh, occasionally, quarterly or, or biannually come to the different cities in the area. Are they still doing any of that or is that all on Zoom now? You know, I have been fighting that fight since I got back in January of 2019. I think that it has, it's really a shame that a lot of those meetings were stopped during the time that Gary Pierce was the chair. Staff doesn't go out. Staff will put out a notice and say, if you want to call in and participate, you can call in by phone. Mm. That's just not the way we should be doing business at the commission. I think we should be going to the people. And I'm really hoping, you know, even though we've had COVID for the last three years, it's been a struggle to get people to engage, but hopefully soon I can press the issue to get back out and meet with the people, actually go to the people and take the issues to them. With a new chair, when that happens, do let us know. We'll come and visit you in Tucson. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. Forward to it. So if you look at the uh, chat, you'll see Lauren's uh, website, you'll see John's, Jonathan's, and you'll see Laura's Facebook on there. All right. Is there anything else? Georgia, do you want to, are we done, you think? I think we got a lot of good questions. Um, just to remind people, uh, Paul has uh, been recording this, and it will be up on our website uh, early next week. Uh, Paul, thank you for all, all that you've done today. Just a quick reminder about our, our March programs. Um, keep in mind that the times and dates have changed. So March the 12th, Judge Stanley Finman will be there at 1.30, not three o'clock. And, and then on March 19th, a week early, Pastor Randy Meyer will be there to talk about border issues. So we um, hope to see you all there uh, next month. Thank you, candidates. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.
Great job. Yeah.